I will never forget the day I learned about moving averages. I was watching a video online and the guy I was watching said that I needed to buy every time price hit the 20 period moving average. And for some reason, I decided to blindly trust this man that I had never met before in my life. I took to my charts, I placed the 20 period moving average on them and I bought the next three times price hit that moving average. I was amazed because all three of those trades won. I started thinking about the kind of car I wanted. I started thinking about the kind of house I was gonna buy. I started thinking about how easy it would be to retire if I could just win three trades a day using this magic 20 period moving average. And then tragedy struck. I ended up losing the next six trades in a row using the same exact moving average. Now, why is that? Why did this happen? Well, the reason is because there is no such thing as a magic moving average. There's no such thing as a magic indicator that's going to help you win 100% of your trades. But what I found out throughout learning more about moving averages and using them correctly is that if used properly, moving averages can create some extremely powerful trading opportunities. And that is why in today's video, I wanna show you one, what moving averages are. Two, how you can use them to help you identify the trend of any market. Three, how you can use them as areas of value to trade from and how you can use them with confluence of other technical factors in order to create some extremely profitable trading opportunities. And as I normally do in my videos, I'm also towards the end of the video going to be showing you a profitable rules based strategy around moving averages that you will hopefully go back test and put into your own trading plan. Those are extremely important steps and hopefully this strategy can help you with your goal of becoming a consistently profitable trader. So if that sounds good, I need you to do two things for me. First off, go ahead and click that like button to help out with the YouTube algorithm. Click subscribe if you are not already. If you are already subscribed, then welcome back. You know what's coming. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So what is a moving average? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It is the average movement of price on a particular currency pair or asset based on a certain number of candles. So. For the example we have on the screen now, the line that you see on the chart that's red is the moving average and it is a 20 period moving average. The reason it's 20 periods is because we have the length or look back period set to 20. We have the source set to close. And what this means is that the moving average itself is going to look at the close of the last 20 candles, red candles, green candles does not matter it's looking at the close of the last 20 candles and it's going to add all of them together once it adds all of them together it's then going to divide that number by 20 to give us the average of price and that is how this line itself is plotted so to make this extremely easy what i'm going to do is change this to a five period moving average and we're going to do this calculation ourselves so with a five period moving average you can see that our current indicator value is 1.21223. And the way you can see that is right here where it says MA that I'm pointing at now. So what I'm gonna do is calculate by adding the last five candle closes. Each of these is the close of one of the previous five candles. And then I'm gonna divide that number by five. And this is the number we will see afterwards. Let's do that right now. So if we add all of those numbers together, we have 6.06114. And if we divide that by our five candles, we end up with nearly exactly 1.21223. Yes, we have 228 here, but the indicator rounded it up by one decimal point, which is totally fine. And that, my friends, is exactly how a moving average is calculated no matter what the number is. So for our last example here, if we had a 50-day moving average here, what would the indicator be doing? This indicator itself set to a 50 period length, whatever you want to call it, would look back at the last 50 candle closes and then would divide that number by 50. And that is exactly how you would get this line no matter what the number is for your length, that is exactly how it's calculated. So that is what a moving average is. 
Now let's move on to how we can use moving averages to help us determine the trend of a market. And I'm going to share with you three different ways to do so right now. Let's head back over to the charts. So there are three moving averages that I would suggest you use to identify trend. They are the 20 period moving average, the 50 period moving average, and the 200 period moving average. These are the most popular and by far the best for helping to determine trend. If you want to look for short term trends, using the 20 period moving average would be a viable option. If you wanted to look for medium term trends, the 50 period moving average would be a viable option. And for long term trends, using the 200 moving average would be a good option for that. Now, you still must understand the normal concepts of trend, that being that in order for a market to be in trend, we need to be making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. And once that stops happening, instead of a higher high or a higher low, excuse me, now we have a lower low. So once this starts happening, we are out of trend whether we are above, below, beside a moving average or not. So it's extremely important that you understand that and don't go solely based on just a moving average. You need an understanding of trend itself as well. But let's think, let's talk about short-term trends. If you were looking for a short-term type of trend, you could say this is the first way of using the moving average in order to define trend. You could say that I only take short trades when I see space between the 20 moving average and price. And then whenever the market is against the moving average, I take no trades. And when the market is above with space, I look for long trades. That is one way you could use moving averages to help define trend. Now, something that helps a lot of traders in order to define this trend is to add another moving average like the 50 period moving average. Now, why would you want to do that? Because with just one moving average let's leave the 20 on what you'll find yourself doing is getting caught in a lot of situations that look like this a lot of consolidation if you are being caught in this type of consolidation then your trend trades are going to be losing during this entire time and that is why some people opt to use two moving averages to keep you out of some of this consolidation now, the downside to this, each of them comes with their upside and down to, downside. And this second way of identifying trend, the downside to it is that you will miss out sometimes on the initial reversal in price. And the third way of helping to identify trend using moving averages is with three moving averages. Now, I don't know that I would use the 200 moving average for this. You could use whatever would be larger than a 50 or lower than a 20. The number really does not matter. So in this case, I would probably do something like a nine period moving average. And at this point, it's kind of self-explanatory, but what you would be saying is when the blue slash 50 MA, the 20 MA, and the nine MA all show me that they have space between them and are pointing to the downside and are not touching and clustered up like this, then I'm looking for short trades. And the opposite would be true once they fan out to the upside like we have here. All of these ways are great in terms of creating objective rules for a trading strategy. I love moving averages for that reason. They create completely objective rules that you cannot mess up. Even if you try, there is no way you can say that these three lines are not fanned out. There's no way that you can say they are fanned out in this situation right here when we have the black line or the nine moving average pulling below the 20 moving average. So it's a way of creating objective rules in a trading strategy, but that's all you need to see moving averages as. And so just as a quick recap, you can either use one moving average like the 50 or the 20 to determine trend by saying that candles are below the 50 period moving average, I'm looking for short trades. Or you could use two moving averages like the 50 and the 20. And you could say when my red line is clearly below my blue line or my 20 below the 50, then I'm looking for short trades. And that's the only time I'm looking for short trades, vice versa for long trades. Or you could go as far as to use three moving averages and say, when I have space between all three, to the downside, then I'm looking for short trades and the opposite is true for the upside, looking for bullish trades when they fan out in this way.
And that's a couple of ways you can use moving averages in order to help you determine the trend of a market. This is something that I've used throughout my entire trading career. I still use moving averages to help me determine trend to this day. And it's something I definitely would suggest you trying to implement into your trading as an objective role in a trading strategy. So now let's move on to how can we use moving averages as areas of value in order to trade from and how can we get other confluences from other technical factors that can really make for some highly profitable trading opportunities. Let's dive into the charts and talk about that now. So just as with trend, in terms of using moving averages for areas of value, I would absolutely stick to the 20, the 50, and the 200 because these are the most respected moving averages by traders around the world. So what you're going to see is a lot of movement in these areas. And the first way to identify a moving average as an area of value is just simply when the market is in a heavy uptrend. The 20 period moving average can act as support throughout that heavy uptrend until of course that trend ends, which happens here. And that's why it's important not to do what I did when I was talking to you earlier in the video and just start buying because the market's touching the 20 moving average. No, you need a lot more confluence and a lot of other factors coming together in order to make this into a profitable strategy, such as entry reasons that make sense, like a hammer candle, such as other factors we're going to be discussing in just a second. Let's move on now and talk more about the 50 period moving average. So the 50 period moving average tends to hold up as support in medium type of trends. But yet again, just like with the 20 period moving average, when that medium trend ends, the moving average fails. And the 200 moving average, which actually acts as support quite often, happens as support for long term trends. So this market had been going up for a while, started to consolidate and push down. Once it hit the 200 moving average, we saw a nice spike to the upside. One way to start looking at moving averages as an objective rule to a strategy would be to plot all three of these on your screen and then say when the moving averages fan out and align to the upside like they are right now. We have space between the 20 and the 50. We have space between the 200 and the 50 when I get a touch of my 20 period moving average and let's say a close above candle like this right here. That's when I want to place a long trade. Now you're starting to add confluence with a nice entry reason and with multiple moving averages fanning out in order to show you that this market in fact is in an uptrend. So you would have to make your own rules for that. That's not the strategy that I'm teaching today, but I'm just trying to give you an idea as to how you would start using moving averages as an objective rule in a strategy. Let's see if we can get something else here. Here we have another situation where we have fanned out moving averages and a nice hammer candle right here. So there are plenty of ways to do this. Your options are unlimited and it's only limited by your imagination in terms of how you use these moving averages to make those objective rules for a strategy. But now let's talk about confluence. So as I stated earlier, using moving averages by themselves as an area of value, yes, it can help you create a profitable trading strategy, but the more confluence you add to moving averages, the better off you're going to be, the more accurate those trades are going to become. And so what I'm going to do now is show you some of my favorite ways to add confluence to moving averages in order to create some of the most profitable trading opportunities possible and some of the most accurate trading opportunities that you could possibly get using. Let's dive into the charts and talk about it. This is how I like to add confluence with moving averages and quite frankly, one of my favorite ways to trade using moving averages is to do this. I wait for the market to touch the moving average. At the time we are looking at the chart right now, this is the 200 period moving average. Once I touch the 200 period moving average, and I'm going to show you a live trade of me actually doing this today. I had three trades doing this one loss and two wins. I'll show you in just a second. But once we touch that moving average, I'm going to put a horizontal line there. And actually, I'm going to make this a zone because support and resistance are not zones. Right. But if I look left from this zone that I have, what do you see? This is not only the market hitting an area of value because of the fact that we are at the 200 period moving average. We also have that lining up 
with previous major structure resistance and support. So one of my favorite ways to add confluence to moving averages is to say, I will not trade the 200 period moving average unless when the market hits the 200 period moving average, it also lines up with structure looking left and then you, I'm going to start talking a little bit about the strategy now. I'll go into full detail after I let you take a look at those live trades. But let's talk about the strategy a little bit right now. We know we're in an area of value because of the 200 moving average. We know we're in an area of value because of this confluence with our previous level of resistance that was support in the past as well. Now, what I would be waiting on in this specific case is a candlestick pattern or some type of of selling pressure like we just saw right there in order to enter the market. So what do I mean by selling pressure? Well, if you do not see the selling pressure here, then you got to go get yourself some glasses. This is a long and large wick that came out of our area, sucked all the way back down. That to me is showing selling pressure. That would be an entry candle. And when I say selling pressure, again, I'm going to talk a little bit more about a rules-based strategy after I show you the live trades from today, but you could set yourself up something like this with a 1.4 to one reward to risk on that with our stop loss above that wick. And you can see what happens. I say 1.4, obviously pick and choose your targets the way you would like to. For me, 1.4 is my first target. And then I manage the position on the way down. And that is how I like to use confluence with moving averages and structure levels in order to point out some of the most powerful trading opportunities that exist. And with that being said, what I'm going to do now is let you take a look at a couple of live trades I had, day trades, earlier today using this exact type of strategy. And then we're going to dive deep into an actual rules-based strategy. You can come away from this video with a way of trading that is rules-based, objective, and that if done correctly can help you to gain an edge over the market. So with that said, take a look at these live trades. I will be right back. So as we were just talking about, another way I'd like to use this type of confluence is with chart patterns. So if you look on the screen, you can see that we have a double bottom, but what's different about this double bottom? Well, this double bottom is happening at the 50 period moving average. So when you have an area of value you can combine this price pattern with, it can really increase the odds of this being a winning trade. So with that being the case, this is a trade we're also gonna go ahead and take today. Chances are I'll probably end up losing one of these, but I did wanna give you guys examples of both of these in live trades. So let's go ahead and risk, I might use 0 0.5 on this one just because of the margin level that it allows. It only allows for a 25 to one on the Canada Swiss for Oanda. So I'm gonna use 0 0.5 so that I'm not super leveraged here and I'm ready to go. So we are involved in this trade and now what I want to do is show you guys another trade that's actually on my radar right now using the same exact strategy. So let's take a look at that live trade as well. Here we have another example of using a price pattern at an area of value, that area of value being the moving average. So as we discussed our rules for this type of price pattern, this is an example going short. And for this example, we're looking at a double top. So we have our first stop and the rule would be on that second test of that resistance level, you would want to see that second test at least touch the 50 period moving average and you don't want to see candles with space above it. This is just how you would make a rules based system around this. What I mean by space above it is you say you get a green candle that looks like this. If there's nothing touching the 50 moving average, not even a wick, then you don't want to take that as a double top trade and expect the market to head lower because that's telling you that we've made it above our area of value. But if candles are clustered around on that second top or if a candle just touches with the wick like we have here, then that's a pretty good indication that we could see a fall out of this market. And with that being the case, let's see if I can get an entry here on this trade as well. And let's go with our stop loss, which is going to be about four pips above. Get our stop above this level over here because we do have a pretty nice distance down to our level of support if this market continues in this downtrend. So we're gonna look for a 1.4 on initial targets. And there we go, we are entered into this trade. I'll keep you guys updated as it plays out. I am going to go ahead and close out our Euro Yen position here. We are at a nice level of support that I was looking at for targets and we are going to exit this position for around a two to one reward to risk ratio. Nice trade. 
Hey guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump out of this Canada Swiss position. It's 4.58 right now and the spread's starting to go up. Just a little hint, if you are going to day trade, make sure if you're on a five minute chart that you're not trading on a pair that has a large spread at 5 o'clock p.m. You will be stopped out by nothing more than the spread alone. So with that being the case, I'm going to go ahead and close this position for a profit of $110. So in order to turn a moving average into a reliable rules-based strategy, I use a process and a phrase I call C-E-S-T. This stands for conditions, entries, stops, and targets. If you have all of these as rules in a trading plan, then you will have a rules-based trading plan that will be easy to follow. So for conditions, all this means is that these are the things we look for before we look for an entry. So in the case of the strategy you're learning right now, what are the conditions for this strategy? Simply put, we are trading price action patterns like double bottoms and double tops that form at a moving average. So with that being the case, the first thing we're going to look for in our C E S T is the conditions, which are going to be, we want to see the market above the 50 moving average. This is for a buy trade. Okay. Everything would be backwards for a sell trade before a buy trade. We want to see the market above the 50. The second condition we want to see is a double bottom. Now the third condition is that that double bottom, at least touches the 50 period moving average with one of the bottoms, whether that be the first bottom or the second bottom is irrelevant, but we want the double bottom to at least touch the 50 period moving average. Once all of those conditions are met, we are ready to work on the entry. So those are all the conditions for our strategy. That's what we need to see before we can try to enter the market before we can look for an actual entry reason. And for me, using price action patterns like double bottoms. What I like to use for an entry is just a confirmation candle. In the case of a double bottom, that would be a green candle. So I'd be looking for a green candle. And also I want that candle to close above the 50 period moving average. So just a quick overview. We're looking for the market to be over the 50 period moving average. We're looking for a double bottom. We're looking for one of the bottoms of the double bottom to touch the 50 period moving average. Once that happens, we are looking for a green candle and the entry candle itself must close above the 50 period moving average. So all of our conditions and entries are set at this point. How easy does that make trading? No more confusion whenever you look at a chart and you're thinking to yourself, man, should I actually trade this or not? We're at support, I wanna click the buy button, should I do it? No, at this point, you wait for every condition to be met. You ask yourself, is the market above the 50 period moving average? The answer is yes, awesome. You ask yourself, did we just create a double bottom? We're gonna talk about the rules for a double bottom in a second. You ask yourself though, did we create a double bottom? Yes. Did one of the bottoms of that double bottom touch the 50 period moving average? If the answer is yes, you continue the process looking for entries. If you find the entry, which is a green candle, you ask yourself, did this green candle close above the 50 period moving average? If the answer to all of your questions is yes, you are now ready to enter the market on a rules based system. No more confusion at all. This is such, something that's so powerful and literally the reason and this is what took me from being an inconsistent losing trader to someone who is consistently pro profitable is using this CEST. Now, you're ready to get in the market after all your conditions and entry is met as long as you know the next two, which is stops and targets. Now, for stops and targets, because I'm not going to have a lot of time to dive deep into them in this video, what I'm going to do is just do a very simple stop of one ATR below the swing low and our target is going to be a 1.4 to 1 reward to risk profile based on that stop loss ATR for any of you that do not know is the average true range what it does is measures the volatility of the market based on the last 14 candles I will put a video I did on the ATR that explains it in full to the top right side of your screen but now that you know the conditions, entries, and stops, and targets we are using with today's strategy, let's take a look at this Canada Swiss trade we had earlier. Let's ask ourselves the questions that are necessary first. Is price above the 50 period moving average? Yes, it is. First condition met. Do we have a double bottom? Well, not yet. Here's the rules for my double bottoms. All I do very, very simply is I place a box on the lowest body of the first bottom and on the lowest wick of the first bottom. 
This box is considered my termination point. What I want to see is a candle at least touch this box with a wick. The body of the candle can close in this box. The wick of a candle can go below this box. What I do not want to see is a candle that closes below this box. At that point, it's signaling trend continuation to the downside, and I do not want to buy when I'm thinking trend continuation to the downside. So let's take a look at how this played out. As we push down, do we have a double bottom now? Yes, we do. We have the touch of our box. That classifies as a double bottom for me. What are we looking for now? We have all of our conditions met, right? We're above the 50. We have a double bottom. The double bottom is touching the 50 period moving average. Next is our entry. What is our entry? A green candle that closes above the 50 period moving average. So let's see if that's something we get during this trading opportunity. And guess what? If it's not, we don't place the trade. That's how easy this is. If we get what we're looking for in terms of the green candle that closes above the 50 moving average with all of our other conditions met, then we place the trade. And if we don't, then we do not place the trade. Super, super easy. Is that a green candle? Pretty easy to recognize, right? Yes, that is a green candle. So at this point, I would be entering the trade on the close of that candle or the open of the next one. They're normally the same thing in the Forex market, but at that point, what is our stops? One ATR below the swing low of the double bottom, right? Here's the swing low of the double bottom. ATR at this candle is three pips. So three plus four is a seven pip stop loss. What is our target? 1.4 to one reward to risk and our trade is set up. Now, I want you to think again about how easy this is. Once all your rules are met, you just enter the trade and how much easier trading is going to be without just guessing every time you place a trade right? How much easier is it going to be to have rules like this? Conditions, entry, stops, and targets every single time you place a trade. Let's see how this specific trade played out. Played around a bit near the entry and eventually pushed up hitting targets. Again, if this trade looks familiar, it's because this is the trade we had earlier and I ended up exiting the trade because it was 5 p.m. for like $110 or so. Now, this is all well and good, but one of the most important parts of having these rules beyond it helping you stay consistent to your plan is you using these rules to take them in historic data and test them and practice the strategy. This is a process called back testing. The rules you just got, the CEST we just discussed, can easily be written down on a piece of paper. You can put that piece of paper beside your computer, beside your keyboard. And you can go through historic data the past 100 times that those rules were all met. I'm talking conditions, entries, stops, and targets. Go through a specific currency pair on a specific time frame. Let's say the Canada Swiss five minute chart, whatever you want to go through, whatever your favorite pair and time frame is, and test those rules the last one time, 100 times that they happened on a chart. Out of those 100 times, did this strategy make a profit? And if it did, great. That means it's likely to make a profit in the future. There is no guarantees in Forex, but it's likely to. And if it did not, then that means it's likely not to make a profit in the future and you have no need to continue trying to trade something that's not likely to give you an edge, not likely to make you profits over time. So the reasons we have all of these rules in place, the conditions, the entries, the stops and targets is not just so we can stay consistent to the strategy because it's based around a set of rules, but it's also so we can take those rules and test them to make sure that the strategy we're trading does produce a profit over a long period of time. So now that I've talked about that and went on my little rant, let's dive back into the charts and take a look at a bearish version of the same exact strategy. All right, so for a bearish version, what are we gonna be looking for? The opposite of what we were just looking at, right? We wanna see that price is below the 50 moving average. We wanna see a double top this time instead of a double bottom. We want to see that one of these tops touches the 50 moving average. As long as one of the tops touch the 50 moving average, our third condition is met. And then we start looking for entries on a double top. It's going to be a red candle and that red candle needs to close below the 50 moving average. So let's see how that plays out on our screen right now. Do we have our first condition met? Is the market below the 50 moving average? Yes, of course it is. Very easy to tell that because we're below the blue line. Next, let's see if we get a double top. 
there we have it a double top does that meet all of our rules so far it does because this double top uh, similar to how the double bottom was the box just goes from the top of the bodies of the first top to the top of the wick and this is the same termination termination point we don't want to see a candle that closes above this termination point but we can have a wick above it and we can have a body that closes inside of it so with that being the case let's push the market forward because we only have two conditions met we have a double top that's below the 50 moving average but our third condition is that the second top must touch the 50 moving average which has not happened yet so let's continue and there we have it is this still following my rules for a double top we don't have a close above this line so yes it is is this touching the 50 moving average yes it is so right now we have all three of our conditions met and we're looking for that entry which is a red candle that closes below the 50 moving average move forward my oh my would you look at that with that being the case do we have a moment where we can enter the market based on this rules based plan this objective plan that we've created so far in this video yes we do we enter the market we have a three pip stop loss here as well and above our swing high which is one i'm gonna do four so that's gonna be about five pips actually four pips is fine and a 1.4 to 1 reward to risk ratio right there we have it now let's see how this specific trade plays out boom immediately pushing down and of course all trades will not immediately go to profit all trades won't even win this is just a way of combining technical factors getting your confluence and then turning that confluence into a rules-based trading plan that's what i wanted to teach you here at the end of this video is how to turn any technical confluence like moving averages combined with price action patterns into a rules-based trading strategy you can actually implement you can go back test you can see if it'll work in your trading plan and then decide whether or not you would like to and if this trade looks familiar it is also because it's the euro yen trade we had where we took profits right down here just because it was such a beautiful trade let's go ahead and let the market run there we go we had our targets at about a i think i ended up getting almost a three to one i think i said two to one earlier in the video but i got almost a three to one on this one and with that being the case what i ended up having was th these were all about a 500 dollars risk so i had 500 times three ish so 1500 on this trade i had a negative 500 on the aussie canada trade bring me to a thousand plus i had the 110 dollar win because of the 5 p.m candle on the cat swiss bringing my grand total using this to a thousand one hundred and ten dollars now that is not again any guarantee i just wanted to add it up on the screen to show you the power of just winning two trades out of three and having a decent reward to risk ratio lastly we are going to take a look at the losing trade okay another bearish trade here so let's count out what we need to do for our c e s t what conditions do we need price below the 50 is that happening yes do we have a double top not yet so we would have to sit on our hands in this case we're using replay mode so we can just push the market forward which is very very easy now until we get a double top do we have a double top now well if i put my box i don't actually have to do this because i've been trading this type of strategy for so long but i'll put the box on here for those of you who need it and if i put that box on the previous high then you can see that yes we do have a double top does this double top touch my 50 period moving average yes it does with that being the case are all of my conditions met yes they are so what i'm looking for now that all my conditions are met is a red candle that closes below the 50 period moving average let's check that out a couple of candles later or one candle later we end up getting that entry let's go with a position as soon as that entry happens our stop loss is going to be three pips above the swing high four or actually that's about five five plus three is going to be eight eight with a 1.4 to one risk reward looks something like this and check out what happens well consolidation mostly and then oh my steven this trade lost yeah the trade lost guess what it happens in trading and i know it sucks it's not fun to deal with trust me i didn't want to lose 500 dollars, but that's going to be a part of trading and that's why 
The third step in becoming a profitable trader is so important. Actually, it's the second step in my triangle of trading success. I'll put a screenshot of that somewhere. And the second step is having a solid risk management plan. These losses are going to happen no matter what kind of trading plan you have, no matter what kind of guru you're following, no matter what kind of trades you're placing, you will have losses. Your job as a professional trader treating as trading like a business is to make sure those losses do not affect your emotions in a way that you can no longer stay consistent to a strategy that otherwise would have made you money over a long period of time. So let's take this for example. You take this strategy. You go out in Aussie, Canada, five minute chart, and you see that out of the past 100 trades, it made money, uh, just a, a relevant amount. Let's say it made money. And it made enough money to where you want to put this into your trading plan. So you do so. And now you're trading it with live money. And then the day comes that you need a little extra money for gas. You need some beer money. You need whatever the money is you need it for. That's your business, not mine. But you need money, so you decide, okay, well today, instead of taking a normal 1% risk or maybe 2% risk, whatever you're used to, you decide you're going to risk 10% because you need extra money. And risking that 10%, that trade loses because it happens, right? Losses do occur. And now you are sitting there 10% down after one trade because you did not stick to a risk management plan that was solid. Even worse than that, what if you risk 10% every single trade? The strategy like this might have five losses in a row or more. Five losses in a row risking 10% per trade, which is what a lot of beginners do because they're in that get rich quick mindset and they're just ready to make money. And trust me, I get it. I came in in the same exact way and it's not necessarily your fault. There's nothing wrong with wanting to make money, but Forex is a market that doesn't have sympathy. It will take every bit of the money you are willing to give it. And if you're sitting there risking too much per trade, then that is you willing to give the market your money. And I don't want to see you doing that. So be sure that you not only back test this to see and ensure that it actually makes a profit over time, but also that you have a solid risk management plan inside of your trading plan. So if that was interesting and you enjoyed this video, we do have some space available in our more advanced content, which is the EAP training program. It is linked in the description labeled EAP training program. In that program, I show you every strategy that I personally use every single day. I also am going to be coming at you with a video every single Monday of what I call my best setups of the week. And these are areas in the market I'm paying attention to for possible trading opportunities and using the strategies you learn in the course at these areas in the market. So with that being the case, you're set up throughout the week because you have the strategies I'm using plus the areas I'm looking at to use those strategies in. It also comes with three to five email alerts per week, not meant as signals, but meant to help you understand exactly how I am using the strategies you're learning in real markets. And even beyond that, this program comes with what I call priority email. It is a mentor program, and this is your access to yours truly at any point that you have questions. It will be me answering those trading related questions for you. Last but not least, the program comes with a 60 day money back guarantee. If you, for any reason, feel as though you did not get value out of the program worth at least what you paid, just shoot us an email and my support team will send you a full refund. Kind of a risk-free offer there. If you're interested in some more advanced training, if not, totally fine, not a big deal. Go ahead, make sure you smash that like button for me because you stayed till the end of the video. So obviously you liked it. Make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button to be alerted about more valuable content just like this we come out with each and every week. And I will talk to you next time. And hopefully by then, you'll have this in your trading plan and be making a hell of a lot of money. I'll see y'all later.